All right, welcome to part two of our uh, of our exercise in getting a uh, little Hadoop cluster installed in VMs. Uh, this is Cloudera's website for getting the Cloudera Manager installed. So this is where you go to actually download the software. Um, I had uh, set up my VMs before. By the way, I'm going to show you Etsy hosts on the main node to show you that I had fixed the, um, the IP addresses for the machines. Um, I think from this point I'm going to use a more convenient window here. And so I'll do that. And uh, I actually have already downloaded the Cloudera Manager installer, so I'm going to copy that over from my downloads directory called Cloudera, Cloudera Manager installer. And we are going to move that over to DMX demo at CDH4 1 in the home directory in case I want to keep that close by. DMX demo at CDH4 1. All right, so let's uh, do an A plus RX has made this uh, executable and readable to all. And then I'm going to do, oh, you know what? I'm going to move back to my console window so that the, so that the uh, installer looks right. And then we'll do, see what this does. So I'm going to do sudo cloudera manager installer.bin. And it gets me through a little uh, set of prompts. I'm agreeing to God knows what, to license Java and the others. Probably just sold my soul, but can't be bothered to scroll down and see what that uh, ELA is out about. Um, and this will basically put the fundamental stuff that the Cloudera Manager needs to operate. So this is not installing all of the Hadoop packages, but the basis, uh, you know, the, the uh, Oracle's Java, uh, the Cloudera Manager, Postgres of all things, because that's what Cloudera Manager's a manager uses to keep track of its uh, state data. Uh, I don't know why they didn't go with uh, SQLite or something like that, but uh, we get to carry around that extra cruft just for the joy of using Cloudera Manager server. I think you'll find that it might be worth it. Cloudera has done a great thing with this and made uh, installation of Hadoop much, much easier. Configuration and management as well, of course. So I'm letting you uh, see the uh, glory of this thing uh, continuing as it goes. And then what it's going to do is it's going to open up a port uh, on this machine uh, that we will, from that point on, be, uh, be primarily using to do uh, installation, configuration, checkup, um, health of hosts, and so forth. So I'll just let that complete. I hate doing the time cutouts because this is excitement that you don't want to miss. And we're almost there. Okay, so it tells me that if I point my web browser to port 7180, something interesting might or might not happen. So let's go ahead and finish that installation and hit the web browser to do CDH4-1 colon 7180. Ah, just like it says, I'm going to have to log in as admin admin. Uh, and now it's going to tell me whatever. I'm just going to use the free edition. I don't need the enterprise edition to manage my three node cluster in a VM. And it's going to deploy the following packages. Hadoop, uh, the basic MapReduce uh, thing, not necessarily Yarn unless I ask it to. HBase Zookeeper Uzi and Hue. 
Okay, I now want to register everything. I'm going to click on the tiny, tiny little type that lets me just go ahead without doing all that stuff. And I'm going to put in my node name, ch4-1.vm, cdh4-2.vm, and cdh4-3.vm. Let's see what happens when I hit search. Well, it goes and finds those, verifies that SSH is running on them, says, okay, I will probably be able to hit these, uh, these hosts and do stuff to them, so we're good to go. And I'm going to put nice little pretty green check marks to say that. So let's see what magic happens as we continue the journey and install CDH on selected hosts. All right, have a little bit more to select here because I need to know if I'm doing CDH4 or some version of CDH3. Well, I want CDH4. For us, uh, for we who are using the sort plugin that SyncSort provides, uh, this uh, exact release is very important, so make sure you get that right. Uh, I'm currently not terribly concerned because there's not many re releases of CDH4. Uh, uh, so I know that I'm going to be able to, uh, to use it. Uh, and then specific release of Cloudera Manager. That's just fine. All the defaults are fine. Let me just check something very quickly. Okay, sorry folks, I'm going back the whole way because I'm thinking I should see something that I don't see. And that's a selection to be a little bit more granular about what packages I deploy. Uh, but let's just go through this process and see how this looks. Uh, I have cloned my machine, so I definitely have the same root password on all of them. So let's go and start the installation. So this is a beautiful thing. It gets all the nodes of your cluster working their little hearts out as uh, all together at once. Uh, of course, when it's all actually on one single physical machine, that's not necessarily such a good thing. But at least I've got two spindles uh, going for this installation. And I've got my caching so it's not downloading the same packages three times uh, uh, for everything. So, I will, this actually does take a long time because it installs a lot of stuff. Uh, these various nodes. So this is a good place to pause, although I will show that at any given time for any given node, you can look at much, much more detail about what it has actually accomplished so far and what it's up to right now. So that's kind of a cool thing. And uh, we'll come back once this is uh, further along. And we jump ahead. So has installing, has installing packages required by Hadoop, which includes, but is not limited to, Pig, Uzi, Hive, blah, 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 Cloudera Manager now, Cloudera Manager agent. Has it ever been so easy? Has Cloudera somehow made it too easy? Have they maybe taken away some of our nerdy credibility? Have they stolen a piece of our souls? Well, if this is wrong, or I should say if loving this is wrong, then I don't want to be right, because this was easy. And watching the nice blue progress bars and seeing the lovely little green check marks and having little retry links if anything goes wrong, it's nice. So let's see. Many, many packages were installed. Let's see what we need to do next. I think we have to figure out which services we want and where. We continue. So we do a sanity check of the hosts that make up our cluster. That's the first step. We can skip this step, but I wouldn't recommend it. Primarily because you get to see more pretty green check marks. But, uh, so surprisingly, even though this is a clone, uh, it did create this uh, HDFS user on the various machines later. So the HDFS user ended up with a different user ID uh, on, on the different uh, nodes of the cluster. So that's easy enough to go back and fix later, which I'll do later. 
uh, and it's not going to cause any big problems and everything else checks out just fine. Uh, the version summary of all the different pieces that it has installed, as you can see, we didn't have to do any of this manually. It just put it all together itself. So this is what I was looking for earlier. This is where I actually choose what services to install. So I'm doing CDH4. Uh, by default, just core, to, core Hadoop is fine. That's actually what I'm uh, going to choose. But just so you know, you might need to go to custom services and choose exactly what you want, especially since uh, you have version one of MapReduce and you have the MapReduce that runs within the Yarn framework, which is new at, uh, you know, for version two. And CDH4 in many ways is kind of a uh, preview of Hadoop 2.0. Uh, and then uh, what other, whatever other services you might want. Uh, so, so for instance, on uh, I might choose to have Yarn and HDFS and you know some of the other things uh, rather than V1 MapReduce. But in this case, it so happens that an upcoming POC I'm about to do at a large financial services company is, even though they're using cutting edge stuff like Hadoop, they're conservative because they're a bank. So therefore they use V1 MapReduce. So I'm going to do the very same thing and just do the core basic installation. Now, uh, there's this impact role assignments, which is an interesting thing. I might choose to change the, uh, the uh, nodes that certain services are running on. For instance, I notice that name node and secondary ne name node are running on the same machine. Well, that's hardly the point. So maybe I want to put that on a different machine. That would be maybe more sensible. Uh, if I've got a lot of services, the job tracker, Uzi, Hue, etc., running <clears throat> on one node, if I had more nodes, I would want you know probably to uh, not have these function as data nodes. You'll notice if I uncheck data node, the task tracker unchecks as well. So those work in lockstep because tasks are sent to where the data is. So the task tracker service must run and data node service must run same as a CDH3. Uh, this name node piece and secondary name node should actually be a radio button because you can only check one of them at a time. So anyway, just so you know, you can uh, balance your services uh, from that page before you actually start them up. And let me go all the way back to where I had done this. Okay, there's my assignments. Redo them and continue. Okay, this is the beautiful part that the configuration, I did create a slash data in anticipation of these defaults. So uh, this is all good to go. I'm not going to mess with any of these. And then it will go ahead and get everything started up, including uh, figuring out HDFS, doing a HDFS format, uh, starting all the services, creating the temp directory it needs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just a wonderful thing. And I think that's just the beginning of the awesomeness that is uh, Cloudera Manager. Not that I'm, you know, pushing them too hard. I don't work for Cloudera. But uh, this has made my life, um, you know, at least 47% better. So I appreciate it. And we will start all the services. And then the last part of this session will just be uh, a quick overview of what you can do once, uh, once the services are started and once uh, uh, you get into the uh, management aspect of Cloudera Manager. It has handy links to some of these other things that you use frequently, like the web interface for you know, HDFS and for Hue and so forth as well.
And if we get into, let's see, I'll just let this uh, continue. I think I'll uh, let a little bit of time pass here. And now we have even more complete progress bars and even more nice green check marks. Every step just makes me more and more confident and more and more optimistic, which is the perfect mindset to be in before I submit my actual Hadoop jobs and watch it all crash. So we continue. It gives me congratulations, so I even get a pat on the back. I mean, what's better than this? Compare that to everything with dpackage and RPM and so forth. Okay, so now I get to monitor the health of a, of a living, breathing cluster. Uh, my hosts are shown to me, including their current resource usage. Uh, you notice that that the uh, that first node is more heavily loaded with services, so it's going to be more always more strained for memory. I might actually end up, uh, you know, uh, juggling memory on on the on these different nodes uh, and giving the first one some more because it's running an awful lot of services. So if I'm asked, since I've also asked it to be a task node, then uh, you know it's going to be running uh, processes uh, in my Hadoop jobs as well and really be busy. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, you can monitor your services. You can look at particular services, for instance, MapReduce, and take a look at this handy configuration, because this is another wonderful thing that, that uh, uh, you know, rather than looking through the, uh, the uh, configuration files on disk, and trying to guess what parameters aren't in there that you need to add, uh, you can simply search for them now. Like the maximum number of simultaneous map tasks, looking for simul. And uh, if you don't like the value, you can overwrite it. And uh, it will then tell you that your configuration is out of date and may, until you restart services, or your services are out of date with the, the new configuration. Uh, that kind of thing. So it's just great and um, uh, hopefully that will be uh, helpful for setting up. There will probably be another video specifically for uh, setting up DM Express and running those jobs within your new nice Hadoop cluster. So uh, that will be for another time. Setting up DM Express, getting it licensed, and submitting jobs uh, either through the command line interface or, or uh, through a graphical interface. All right, that's it for now. Catch you on the flip side.